So um, the topic is how uh, ASOS and Russian Post uh, have successfully cooperated um, and f and faced some some issues along the way, and come out the other side in a, in a very successful partnership. Um, and without further ado, I've got um, Peter Hines, uh, director of the Berlin branch, uh, and also Ricardo Manhufa from uh, ASOS um, International Logistics uh, as well. So, would you like to just introduce yourselves quickly? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, and thank you everyone that you came today to our session. So as you said, my name is Peter Hinz. I'm actually in charge of the uh, European business of the Russian Post. Um, and um, yeah, I, I'm with the Russian Post already six years. So it's quite a while. And I never expected that I would be uh, six years with the Russian Post. Um, but uh, yeah, we started in 2015 to start the European business from scratch. Uh, it's been going very well and uh, developing quite uh, quite good. And uh, today I'm very glad that we talk with, uh, uh, we have ASUS here because ASUS was our biggest client here in Europe um, and I had uh, a lot of challenges and we learned a lot through that. And uh, for me, it was a very valuable uh, experience. Awesome. Ricardo? Nice. Hey guys, uh, Ricardo, Head of Delivery Solutions for Europe and Russia. So everything transportation related, last mile returns. So everything outside of the warehouse, outside of the return side operations. Um, with ASOS since three years, um, a bit more than three years. And uh, I used to work before for Amazon Logistics. So building their, their last mile uh, in Germany, in Berlin. And yeah, ASOS is a fashion online retailer. Um, we're coming from the UK, but deliver almost all, uh, everywhere over the world. And yeah, good to be here. So just because it's such an interesting access, I want to ask you the, the first question. So you as ASOS going into like Russia, CIS markets, have you observed any sp specificities in market that are, that are relevant for the audience today that you might want to share? I mean... We're doing a lot of markets, right? Uh, within our group, we have like Europe and Russia and also some other smaller markets. And so what is one thing? Like every market is different. So, and this is within Europe already. I mean, like the delivery experience in Italy or compared to Germany or France, you know, is already different, but you compare it to Russia, it's like completely different thing. And um, so when you maybe take a big carrier within Europe, right? and you could do it in some countries in Europe, you can't take the same thing and just put it into Russia. So you really have to know and to get insights. So what's happened there? Who are the main players yeah, who actually can cover all over Russia? Who, yeah, who should I go with so far for me? And this was uh, two and a half years ago with my former manager. So it was really, really deep analysis, like understanding the market because it was so much so different. And then there's this customs thing, right? What also uh, was a new challenge because we did Europe and then you have customs. And uh, that's a big word, uh, put all the letters very big because customs is a big thing. Um, and you should be very, very aware if you go to Russia that this should be your first priority. Um, because yeah, if you can't fulfill this, if you mess up at this, then your last mile solution can can be as as good as you want. If your orders get stuck in customs, then you have a problem. Unique, very good. Um, and um, and for for you. Um uh, for you, Peter, just in terms of, uh, I guess, you know, historically there's been a, a bit of paranoia about, um, you know, Russians entering Europe in any, in any way, shape or form. Uh, but in terms of the post itself, one of the unique things we were, we were discussing was your experiences in terms of launching Russian post into Europe and the importance of having that, that sort of more Western presence. Would you like to comment on that? Yes, well, I, I always get asked and still get asked and today I also get asked quite often the question, Russian Post, so what are you guys doing in, in, in Europe, right? Because Russian Post, Russian National uh, Postal Operator in Russia, what you're doing on the uh, on the European business. And I always say, you know, when we also uh, uh, look at what uh, Ricardo just said, um, we're here to take uh, to, to take away risk and fear of, of the market. So, so we kind of uh, try to build a bridge between the markets, uh, which is very important for us. So I always share a story. Um, uh, I always like to uh, share, and I have uh, experienced quite often in the past. It's like a, a, a CEO of an e-commerce company 
um, gathers their team together and says like, okay, which uh, which market should we enter next? Um, somebody says, okay, how about Russia? Because it has like quite quite interesting facts. We have over 90 million uh, online users per uh, per month. We have over um, uh, uh, 50, uh, 54, I'm getting nervous, I'm sorry. That's all right. uh, um, uh, we have over, uh, over 54 uh, million uh, online shopper per, uh, per, per month and we have uh, 25 that do cross-border shipping. But then when, when, we, when we look at that, we see, um, uh, ask around like the questions, so what's going on, right? Uh, uh, what's your opinion? So the customs team says like, okay, what's with the customs? Like we have uh, heard it's not easy to Russia. The next thing is like, okay, what is uh, uh, um, about uh, maybe uh, money? What is with the ruble, the situation? What is with logistic and so on? So there's a lot of fears around. And after that, um, like uh, the CEO usually comes to conclusion, okay, Russia is a really interesting market, but maybe later on, let's let's do it a little bit, a bit uh, uh, later. Now we, we focus on a different market. There are also other different interesting markets. So that's the moment uh, where we come in and say like, okay, we take away that fear, right? You have uh, you can uh, cooperate with us. You can infuse into the Russian post market already in uh, in Europe. We have several hubs. We have one in uh, in Berlin. We have one in Finland. We have also one in um, uh, in the UK. Um, so we're expanding quite uh, quite well and uh, offer you to take away uh, the risk and the fears of the Russian market. We do the customs for you, so uh, you have somebody who knows the market and takes away that. Okay, you keep you keep using the word the word fear and, and I guess anxiety around entering something that that you know the media is probably made inherently a bit strange and, and distant. Um, very large markets. You've got you know you got uh, I guess tyranny of distance and and the operational piece. But what you're talking about is is a bit more a bit more cultural, I guess. Well, I think whenever you talk about Russia, unfortunately, you have fear and you have misconceptions. Uh, uh, you always have misconception of the, uh, about different markets. Um, and I think um, if people start to, to do business in Russia, uh, they see uh, Russia has changed a lot and it's totally not, uh, not the same. Maybe, maybe you can share your experience like uh, on the Russian market. Um, yeah, I mean, at the beginning, I just knew Russia from film and movies, you know, from Hollywood. Um, and unfortunately, because of Corona, uh, also when we are managing now Russia, I haven't been there yet. Um, so I didn't know a lot of the business. I just thought, okay, you have Moscow, St. Petersburg, and that's like the majority. And around this, it's kind of nothing. But uh, when we now see our customer base, you know, you, you, you have a lot of customers and we're not speaking about like... 80% uh, in Moscow and St. Petersburg, it's much, much more, which are in further regions. And this was, for example, one thing uh, was was surprising for me. And um, what you should be also aware when you think about Russia is like, it's so huge, yeah, and it's so, so huge. And you have to get also your systems ready. I mean, if you take a country like Denmark, right, you have one, you can put like one promise on it, everything is good. You know, you get your 96, 98%, whatever, get delivered. Um, but Russia is more than three times bigger than uh, the EU, right? And uh, and there you really have to understand the market, your customer base, where they are based, and also to have your systems ready. Because if you, for example, can't have a zonal promise, right? Then you have to give uh, all your customers like 30 days or 21, 21 days or something like this, which is then uh, for the conversion rate, ob obviously a mess, right? So, and if you want to do it good on this logistical part and on the last mile, then you uh, really need to take time there and really um, get out of your uh, or my German position or you position and then just be open to learn and understand before you run. So this is definitely something. Yeah. Do, do you do you view it? I mean, R Russia as a, as a as a country in its own right, but obviously you got the whole uh, CIS Russian speaking nations un underneath. You got another you know hundred million consumers, middle class, emerging middle class, all uh, all vying for for products from all around the world. Did you view it as as an entry point into into CIS as well potentially? 
What do you mean by CIS? Well, all, all the stands and uh, the the countries in the in the middle, former uh, former USSR nations, just to the south of uh, of, of Russia. Yeah, and there you. So our structure is a little bit different. So we have like uh, warehouse, warehouse in Berlin, two warehouses in the UK, and uh, the responsibilities are separated by the warehouse and the regions we fulfill. Um, so we saw, to be honest, uh, Russia a little bit separate. Because this is, uh, from from my perspective now, the third biggest market that we manage in our team. And that's why it was like full concentration on this and the markets around um, are also important. We also wanted to develop this, but, uh, you know, the amount of volume was sitting there. And this was like a huge, huge project. And I didn't expect this, like, to move one country to us and then have this much of workload. Not because of Russia Post, it's also internal, right? But probably a big enough, uh, a big enough problem in its own right, launching a market that big. Yeah. What would you say, aside from customs, because I recognize that, and I think a lot of people in the room will as well, what, what, do, you, what do you think an, another significant hurdle going into the market um, that uh, the audience should be aware of? Um, yeah, so we, we are in conversations now since three years. Um, and it was a journey, to be honest. Yeah, um, I mean, we achieved a lot in the last three years, um, but especially at the beginning, it was like, okay, understanding each, each other, like, what do you want? What are your needs? And um, like, when we take the performance report, you know, like, uh, it was much different view from Russia Post side than from our side, you know, because like these are a company with like more than 400,000 employees, you know, and changing something is not something you can do quite quickly. And um, probably things were more manual than maybe in other countries. But this was just the journey we we did. Uh, we went from, you know, uh, couriers just putting papers uh, to, to houses to, not, to notify the customers that their parcel is delivered. So then we went to SMS. Now we are at email. And um, this is, you know, small things, but it was big steps because the market is just different. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where you have in some markets, it's a Saturday delivery, totally normal and other markets not, you know, and uh, this is also with Russia. Interesting. Um, but we made very good progress. Uh, we had also another project, for example, um, where we tested like flexible fulfillment uh, so that we not just fulfill it from Berlin warehouse, also do it from the UK. Um, and we had a situation there where we needed like short term charter flights and everything in a time where it was almost not possible to get it. And uh, yeah, they could make it happen. So um, one thing I can tell that um, a lot of things were difficult. But a lot of things went really well and could make possible. And this is probably because it's the Russian post. And that's why I'm looking back at three very uh, sometimes exhausting times, but also uh, happy times because now we can manage it easily, have a smooth relationship. And uh, that was the goal. And we obviously need to continue, you know, want to increase customer experience, want to get better, better, better. Um, but I can really see this and... Uh, works fine that's awesome so yeah um, can get maybe i would even right jump in right there Perfect. right uh, so so the thing is obviously we 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 have a over 200 year of history we we are the second biggest employee in the russian, russian federation um and obviously for for example in in germany when i entered uh, uh the russian post the, for me postal business was always oh the postal man comes and brings you uh the shipments in russia for example it's uh it, it's uh, used to be a more a uh, women dominated business right so we have like over 90 percent of employees of the russian post are are female in russia so this has something to do when you talk about uh new things like door-to-door -door delivery with heavy like somebody comes and wants to have like a delivered uh, 31 kilogram uh, you cannot do that because you know the structure is not there so um when we started the business here in europe my understanding was okay we have a we are a big company we we are a huge company with big possibilities but here in europe we are like a startup we want to understand 
what does the e-commerce want because our focus is on e-commerce and was on e-commerce um and so for me it was very valuable what what he said like uh notification right uh, uh e-commerce needs it uh digital it needs it uh sms or an email notification uh, it wasn't there we, we we created it but you need to like change a lot internally to get it going um but i always had like the right partner there to tell me uh where to go to you know and and that's why i think it was very valuable and, and a very nice uh, way we went uh, uh, until today. And uh, we're still learning, but I, I feel very comfortable after everything like we, we went through the Brexit, you know, situation. Um, we, because we have, as I said, we have also warehouse there uh, about uh, the COVID situation where we also saw, you know, uh, the market at the beginning, uh, like in e-commerce, uh, especially in fashion. It's not, not only like uh, uh, ASUS related, but like in terms of Russian posts, you know, we saw al also changes there and um, we reacted very uh, very fast on that and um, um, yeah the current uh, development and growth rate is is is, is very uh, telling me that we probably didn't do everything wrong in that time <laughs> just uh, yeah there's no there's no right or wrong there's just uh, um, I'm moving forward or learning right um, yeah. but in terms of uh, in terms of your operational setup now and say in the future you go and with the greatest respect you go and land another five customers like like asos for example do you see any any major drastic changes that you need to make particularly in uh, in western european operations in order to accommodate demand and volume as it as it comes well 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 i i would say like after going the uh the cooperation with asus i feel quite comfortable that today uh we we, we can cooperate with basically uh any size of companies and uh uh, let's be honest. Uh, it's not my first delivery. I, I, I met um, at one of the, uh, the first delivery conference. Everybody came up to me and said, "Like Russian Post, uh, what newspaper is that?" You know, like Washington Post, Russian Post. So people didn't even know that we're like the, the national postal operator of the Russian Federation. Today, um, I had so many meetings here, um, and people approaching me and already wanting to cooperate uh, with us and knowing, okay, you're the better, best solution currently on the market. And I think that's for me personally. Um, very nice to see but this is uh, just a motivation not to stop and and and, and uh, uh go on so um yeah as i said we try to um we we, we try to uh, build a bridge between the european and the russian market mm -hmm. um, but also it should go in both ways so what we're also doing currently is for example uh trying to push also russian export uh where we where we in um, uh invest quite a lot and also uh with our subsidiary in germany we 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 opened up uh, Amazon store uh, where we put Russian uh, products uh, so we also uh, do that on top so yeah so that's interesting yeah that's very interesting and in, in terms of you know you, you guys are very experienced in, in the Russian market um, you know e-commerce as well but um, in terms of advice for retailers in, in the room you know is, is there any specific categories that you think have huge scope for growth versus others that might be a bit more restrictive for various reasons or, or, or well catered for in terms of individual e-commerce verticals? Maybe I go first. Yeah, <laughs> so, so I would say the the, the Russian e-commerce market, and we have an expert sitting over there from the Russian Association for e-commerce. Uh, we have uh, basically two 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 different markets. It's the Asian market. Right, it's it's like more up to five uh, five dollars uh, and uh, a lot of volumes, and we have the European and uh, the North American market where we have uh, much higher valued uh, uh, products. Um, and if we look at um, the behavior of our clients, they know what they want to buy on on, on that market, right? So, um, and the behavior of uh, what they buy is pretty much the same of uh, what we would buy here in Europe. So. Uh, we always talk about Russia, oh, Russia, Russia. This is not so far away. And actually the people, like, uh, they have the same uh, the same approaches and also the same uh, uh, buying habit. So so I would say basically everything. But what I see, uh, like, in terms of businesses, a lot of uh, auto supply, fashion, uh, bicycle, uh, those are, uh, they're very keen to enter the Russian market because they show uh, a lot of potential. Uh, but also, you know, kids fashion, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, fashion in general is, is, is a big thing. Excellent. So not fashion. We, we do it already. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, to be honest, I can't give that much insights there. Um, I mean, we're doing business there. And I think like from logistics supply chain uh, perspective, we have quite a good knowledge. But um, 
Yeah, that I think other people can tell better what Russian people need. R R Ricardo doesn't want to uh, share the crown jewels with the audience in case he creates more competition. Is what I'm hearing there. Okay, no problems. I'm joking. Um, uh, right, we got we got about five minutes left, so I'm going to hand over to the audience um, before we release you to uh, go drinking and having food. Um, so, does anyone want to volunteer with a question, please? Uh, what about returns? What is your experience? Uh, exporter or re-importing so, so we have to repeat the question one more time so the yeah. question was uh, with uh, with returns for for the russian market um yeah it depends really where your return center is um so at the moment we are not working uh, with the russian post um for the returns uh, let's see how it goes in the future uh, but at the moment we're having like several services and also different carriers so it was a little bit uh, difficult on the return signs um because there are some barriers you can maybe describe it better um and if you have your warehouse in poland right then it's probably a little bit more difficult and it depends if it's like rts or if it's like customer returns um but this is definitely something to review or but also depending like which partners you choose okay so maybe my follow-up question for me would be for the russian post is like so if we would start selling and shipping to Russia, how, how, what would be your recommendation to get the products back? So, 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 so I, I, I mean, I hope that one day there will be a tender also for returns and, and we will participate on that as, uh, definitely. Um, obviously, we have a return solution, right? Um, but to be honest, uh, out of my experience and also if we look at uh, the volumes we have, uh, um, we actually don't have that much in, in terms of percentage of returns that we have. Uh, so the current solution that we have, we just get them to, to Berlin, we get them through customs uh, and, and then we either uh, send them to our clients or uh, uh, they pick them up uh, themselves so it depends on on uh, where they're located and what, what they want to do but uh, yeah we can offer that and uh, we do it on a weekly basis excellent um, we've got a couple of minutes for questions I'll, uh, I'll personally buy you a drink outside any volunteers go ahead uh, for ASOS and maybe a bit of a tricky question but at the moment there are some uh, logistic partner that offer a similar kind of offer from uh, the warehouse where your company or it is in the EU up to uh, Russia where they do their custom and else uh, what did lead you working with the Russian posts in this entire supply chain rather than an external logistics supplier um, yeah, I, I can answer this question, not giving uh, too many insights, but um, I come back to the customs point. Yeah. And if you think where Russia Post is coming from, from the Russian government, then um, we have very good experience with the customs and we saw that it's going through very well. And um, take a postal carrier, take a commercial carrier and see the advantages maybe. Um, well, could be an advantage, um, but they're running very, very well. Um, and uh, so for us, the commercial worked out, the commercials. So, um, but I mean, like, you know, this is, there's a, also a lot of other good carriers. So everyone has to do it for his own. I, I can just tell from our experience and I just can tell that no matter what we had for problems in the warehouse with waiting, for example, you know, where you have like this uh, weight variances, you know, uh, they could make it possible, uh, no matter what the situation was. It, it couldn't be uh, like weeks or weeks, right? But in the situation we needed support, they were there and they could solve it. Um, and from the commercial and also perspective as was you know, quite all right. And um, we also transferred uh, a lot of th this volume uh, from air freight to road freight, which is from the sustainability um, perspective also a very, very big thing. I mean, before we flo flew it in from the UK, now we truck it from Berlin. I mean, it's still, uh, I think, 1,800 kilometer or something like this. But uh, if you see the CO2 fo footprint, it's much better. And uh, that's also like one of our goals to achieve like less co2 
and maybe I jump in explain why customs is a little bit easier maybe with us because we uh, we can integrate uh, clients as uh, uh, ACO authorized custom operator we're an authorized custom operator so that means if you have for example what many people do not know um, you have a free threshold of 200 euros uh, uh, per shipment currently uh, uh, tax free. Uh, and over that, if you if you want to um, uh, uh, get something that is that is more expensive, you usually have to do uh, go to the customs. You have to pay for it and so on. With the Russian Post, you can do that via our app, uh, which is widely used in Russia, um, and uh, therefore it's it's much more comfortable for for uh, for, for the uh, client as well. And if you're a client, an ACO client, we uh, share already uh, the information digital with the Russian customs um, uh, upfront what shipment there is so we have like an average of uh, 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 customs clearance of one one minute uh, uh, of um, ACO clients so I think that's that's one of the benefits and why Russia and why Russian Post I mean uh, we have uh, 42,000 uh, um, uh, postal office of all over Russia right uh, I always compare it with McDonald's McDonald's is worldwide a little bit less uh, offices but it's not always about size it's about uh, the country so uh, if you if you want to enter the Russian market and you want to enter all region, um, we can offer that. You know, um, uh, if you just want to enter one major city, uh, yeah, there's probably you. Someone else can offer you the same, but we offer you the same standard all over Russia. And uh, I think time is almost over, but uh, ASUS also uh, is, is seeing that the volumes are not just from the big cities, but also from, from the regions. So I think if you want to enter Russia, you shouldn't forget about the region. Awesome. What a, what a fantastic story of, you know, a, a very large organization being nimble, innovative and, you know, client centric. That's fantastic. So uh, thank you. I think we're out of time. So thank you very much for your time. Bashoi, spasiba. And we can let everybody go for, for some drinks and some fun. Thank you very much. Thank you.